There is one question I think that every artist will eventually ask themselves, and that is, should I trace my portraits? Should I use a grid? Should I use some other method that might speed up the process? Is it considered cheating if I decide to use some sort of shortcut to help me draw this figure? Now to put your mind at ease, I would say no, you're not cheating whatsoever. I don't think there's anything wrong with tracing, using grids. There are so many amazing artists out there that are using many different methods to create the figure in an efficient way. Now, there could be a lot of reasons behind this. One could be they're just trying to save some time. Maybe they spent years freehand drawing and they just decided, you know what? I know I can do that part. That part is not a big deal. I'm just going to skip past that. I'm going to trace some of the edges, get some of the line work down so that I can fly through that and get more done in a given day. Now, as far as how I go about doing my painting process and my drawing process, I don't think I've ever actually traced one of my portraits before. Now, when I was a kid, I don't know if I really knew of ways to trace as far as having a light table or a projection or some other method to actually create a tracing. I didn't figure out that there was such a thing as grids until maybe my teenage years. By that time though, I had already decided that I really enjoyed the drawing process. So for me, it's always been a pleasure to challenge myself to draw something, especially when it gets more complicated or it's maybe a certain angle I've never worked on. All of these challenges are something I really enjoy about the process of drawing. So what are the benefits of freehand drawing and not using any tracing methods? Well, before I get into that, I wanted to quickly mention that I do have a Patreon page where you can learn a lot of my methods through the many tutorials that I have available to you that will help you get an insight into how I approach my portrait paintings. So one of the biggest reasons that I see right off the bat from drawing freehand for so long and something that you could really benefit from, especially if you're really early on in your portrait painting process, is that it will really help to improve your observational skills. If you're tracing, if you're just putting down a grid or tracing, anything that might be helping you along the way, you're gonna kind of just ignore certain things that are happening in your painting that you would have to force yourself to notice if you were freehand drawing, whether it's the shapes that you see, whether it's the angles, the way things relate to one another. This painting, for example, the way I approached this one was looking at those big obvious shapes first. So for me, the obvious shapes are the negative space around the portrait itself. So I started to fill in the black areas first and then work my way into the next obvious shapes. And for me, that would be things like the forehead, the cheeks, the eye locations, just getting those generally in the correct spot so that once I have those proportions and those relationships correct, I could start going down to the smaller and smaller shapes. But by looking at all those relationships, that is the key. And it's something that I do automatically from just doing it so many times. Now, if you're really early on, you haven't done this very often yet, it is gonna take quite a few paintings to get used to it, getting used to a method that works for you. And again, check out my Patreon tutorials. That's how I approach every painting is with the biggest shapes first down to the small shapes and that will really help you along the way. Another big benefit to freehand drawing and not using any tracing is it's going to help you with your artistic growth. I think at least for me, since I've been painting this way with this method, it has allowed me to grow in many different directions and try many different stylistic choices that weren't hindered by having lines and edges and grids and things in the way that I had to worry about. You have to imagine if you have every line, every edge drawn in before you even start painting, all of a sudden you're gonna be afraid to paint over those lines. You're gonna be afraid to do anything that hides those lines be behind your paint. So you're gonna paint right up against the edge of those lines and it's gonna really reduce the amount of style that you can add to those edges around where those edges are happening. This may start you down a path where you start using glazes more often because you think, well, if I use a glaze, that way, if I paint over the line, I'll still be able to see it to some degree. This will keep you from using maybe thicker paint or trying things with thicker paint because you're gonna end up painting right up against those edges or just painting over things and feeling lost in those moments. This painting is a great example of the benefits of not worrying about what was laid down before it. So if you have line work or even like a previous layer where you feel like you just got everything perfectly in place, 
If you have the confident drawing skills, you won't be afraid to paint over something to maybe create more color depth or to just try some textural things where it's going to require you to have faith in your abilities to refine the locations of the eyes, the nose, any of those little details you might paint right over. Another aspect to freehand drawing that some may feel is actually a negative versus a positive is the fact that it's not going to be 100% accurate. When you freehand draw, it's guaranteed something's going to be stretched or pulled just a touch. It kind of depends on how much practice you've had, but for me, every one of my paintings, if I was to take the original image, put it right over top of the final painting, there's going to be something that's a little off. But the question is, does it look like the person you're painting? Is it your impression of what you see and that's what you want is the impression of the subject and that's why they call it impressionism it's it's what the artist is seeing and if you decide to trace you're going to lose that you're going to lose that unique quality that only you will have in your portrait paintings something that is easy to forget is just that simple feeling of accomplishment when you freehand painted a portrait there are times when I have a very difficult painting where maybe the hands are involved, there's a lot of different angles happening that are a little bit more difficult than usual. When I complete that painting and everything just feels right, that is a really great feeling that you can't get if you trace. You just feel like something was not done on your own. And for me, that feeling of just knowing I did the whole thing without any real help from tracing or grids is something I just really enjoy. Now, what this does is really twofold. It, it helps you develop patience for one, but it also builds your confidence level. So every time you create a painting that is more and more difficult, where you have to really break out the analytical skills and improve your observational skills, you're going to find that your patience and your confidence will keep growing and growing so that when you have that commission come through or somebody wants you to paint them and you're going to be able to tell them that you freehand painted the whole thing, that is a real sense of accomplishment that maybe is not going to be there as much if you traced or used some sort of other grid or guide to help you along the way. Now, if you're really early on in your process of learning to become a portrait painter or just learning how to draw with pencil, I would say the best way to go is to keep your angles fairly simple. Try to find portraits or take photos of people that are looking straight into the camera where things are more or less symmetrical. They're not looking up or down or to the side or any sort of strange angle that maybe is a little bit more difficult, especially when you're just getting started. And then just keep getting a little bit more difficult with your angles, throw in a hand once you get to that point and see how good you can get. If you do want to learn more about my process, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. There's a lot of great tutorials on there that will really help you along the way. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. I will be talking to you again very soon.